Hello, and welcome to today's chemistry class for SS1. Alright, in today's class, we are going to be treating particulate nature of matter, but this is going to be part one of the topic. In this lesson, the objectives are the student should be able to define matter, explain the structure of the atom, explain subatomic particles, define an atom, and also explain the discovery of subatomic particles. And so, going forward, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. The particles of matter could be atoms, molecules, or ions. Let's now look a little bit closer at some of these words and get their true meanings. What is an ion? An ion is simply a charged particle. The charge could be negative or positive. Positively charged particles are called cations. Examples are the sodium ion, calcium ion, the iron ion, and then the ammonium ion. Negatively charged particles are called anions. They are e.g. chloride ion, the nitride ion, and the hydroxyl ion. So now, what is the structure of the atom? How does it even look like? The atom looks like the solar system with the core, the center, called the nucleus, where the protons and the neutrons reside, while the electrons are revolving around that nucleus. This means that the atom has three sub-particles called the electrons, the protons, and the neutrons. And so, the proton has a positive charge and it has a relative mass of one. While the electron has a negative charge of the same magnitude as the positive charge on the proton and a negligible mass. The neutron, on the other hand, has no charge but has a relative mass of one. The characteristics of the neutron is the sum total of that of the proton and the electron. The discovery of electrons. Electrons were discovered by Sir John Joseph Thomson in the year 1897 in his cathode ray experiment. He subjected residual gas to a high potential difference at a low pressure. He observed rays traveling in straight lines from the cathode. He called the rays cathode rays. Although, after many experiments of the cathode rays, J.J. Thompson demonstrated the ratio of mass to charge of cathode rays, which is 1.76 times 10 to power 11 coulombs per kilograms. He confirmed that cathode rays are fundamental particles that have a negative charge. Cathode rays became known as electrons. Robert Millikan, in 1910, through the oil drop experiments, found the value of the charge to be minus 1.6 
times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. That is the magnitude of the charge, of the negative charge on an electron. Further experiments showed that the cathode rays, which of course now we know as the electrons, travel in straight lines and cast shadows of opaque materials placed in their path. That they are composed mainly of negatively charged particles. And also that they are capable of producing mechanical motion. They are also identical in nature. All these are the characteristics, the properties of the cathode ray that were experimentally discovered. The neutrons were discovered by James Chadwick in 1932 when he demonstrated that penetrating radiation incorporated beams of neutral particles. Neutrons are located in the nucleus alongside the protons. Along with the protons, they make up almost all the mass of the atom. The number of neutrons is called the neutron number and can be found by subtracting the proton number from the atomic mass of the atom. The number of neutrons does not have to equal the number of protons. Essentially, we can calculate the mass of an atom by adding the number of the protons and the number of the neutrons. Whatever it gives you will serve as the mass number of that atom. So, moving forward, since the atom is electrically neutral, there must exist inside the atom enough positively charged components to balance the negative charged electrons. Mr. Thompson repeated the earlier experiments but used a discharge tube with a central cathode which had a hole in it. He noticed a reddish glow in the opposite direction to the green glow and proved that the reddish glow was due to a positively charged ray. <clears throat> and now, what is an orbital? An orbital is a region of space where the probability of finding an electron is high, while a shell is an imaginary line on which electrons revolve. Each shell is divided into orbitals. These orbitals are called S, P, D, and F orbitals. So, each shell, depending on its size and nature, contains a certain number of orbitals. For example, the K shell contains only the S orbital, while the L shell contains the S and P orbitals. The N shell on its own contains the S, P and D orbitals, while the N shell contains the S, P, D and F orbitals. Each orbital has a maximum number of electrons that it can hold. The sublevel S has a maximum of two electrons, while that of P has a maximum of six electrons. The D orbital can carry a maximum of ten electrons, while the sublevel of F can carry a maximum of fourteen electrons.
And now we have come to the summary of this lesson. In this lesson, we learned about the definition of matter, the shells and orbitals. We also spoke about the ion and the atomic structure. We also talked about the discovery of subatomic particles. Now we have come to the assessment part of the class. Question 1. Who discovered the neutron? A. Isaac Newton B. Robert Boyer C. James Chadwick D. Ernest Rutherford Question 2. Which of the following particles revolve around the nucleus and does not have a mass? A. Proton B. Electron C. Neutron D. Ion Question 3. Which of the following particles is positively charged with a mass of 1? A. Proton B. Electron C. Neutron D. Ion And so with this, we have come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you learned very well. Hope to see you in the next class. Thank you.